Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here. Welcome back and today is episode one of my Let's Build series. Yes, welcome to the Mumbo Jumbo Let's Build series in which I am going to build a redstone orientated thing. Now for those of you who aren't following me on Twitter, I have got two things to say to you. Number one is that you probably should be following me on Twitter because those of you who are know a lot more about what's going on than those of you who aren't. The next thing is that I tweeted this out a couple of weeks ago and people went absolutely wild for the idea so I decided to start on it. Now the first project we're going to be working on in the Let's Build series is a secret evil science lair. Okay, so that is the plan. It is going to be redstone based. We're going to have a ton of different mechanics and things going off in and around the base. It should be a lot of fun and I am excited to start. Now this is the seed that I have got and as you can see we're actually part of the new biome and I haven't really seen many of these and they are really really cool. Now the first thing that we are actually going to be doing is building our entrance and it's important that this has to be very secretive. You don't want people seeing it. Luckily my channel seems to orientate quite a lot around these kind of builds so I think I'm going to use uh, the staircase to heaven type thing where it kind of comes out of the ground and then opens up in the wall and then you can walk through and then we will probably have some form of elevator or something that drops you down into the main area. I think that'll be a pretty good place to start. Now believe it or not that is now all in place. I just used a bit of MC edit and importing and that is now up against this wall and you can't really tell that it's there. There's a few blocks that could do with being removed you know. Uh, actually I'll replace that one there because that looks a little bit obvious. But um, I wouldn't say that that is particularly clear. But then if we head down here, you can see all of the redstone wiring down beneath. And I will actually include a link to the tutorial of this design or at least the showcase video so that you can check it out. But if we flick this lever here, you can see, yes, that looks awesome. So then we can just head up and... Um, We'll have like a little room up at the top, but we need some kind of secretive way to actually activate this thing. What I was thinking is we could do some kind of redstone torch key. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head how you go about building one of these. So I think, now I seem to remember, you have the redstone torch around about there, and then you have a sticky... <laughs> I've gone wrong already. So you have like a sticky piston uh, underneath where the redstone torch would be. And you put a piston, a redstone power block on its face there. Uh, we need quite a lot of space for this build, so I'll quickly clear out an area. So redstone power block there, and then a redstone power block here. Yes, yeah, that's it. And then you have a sticky piston facing in this direction uh, with that on its face. And you can see that it's sort of like jitters. So yeah, I think we've just about done it there. So there goes the redstone torch, and you can see that actually works quite nicely. And if we cover up all of this area, you would never know it was there. Now we don't actually have it hooked up to our uh, staircase thing yet, but I will quickly do that now. So we wanna head down underneath. I'll start clearing it out. It is a lot harder to build in like a natural environment than it is to build in something like my redstone testing world. So I believe this actually acts as a T flip flop. It gives a one tick pulse. We'll quickly give it a go. Uh, I can't seem to remember which one is the output. It will probably be this one down here. This will be the most useful one anyway. So I'll quickly set something up like this so that we can tell if it is actually a one tick pulse. Uh, so we'll place our redstone torch down again. That will fire and we should see that yes, okay, so that is actually really useful because that is acting as a T flip flop, which means that we get a constant pulse output. So then if we take an output from here with redstone dust, we can actually remove this lever now and then place this down, grab our repeater and run it into our staircase. You should... If everything has gone to plan here, let's just try and get out of the hole that we're in and cover up all the holes that we've made. If we place down our redstone torch, you should see that, yes, look at that. So that has been successful. And then when you place your redstone torch again, that will all close back up. So that has worked pretty well there. So I've just gone from 1.7 into the snapshot and then I went back to 1.7 and back over to the snapshot. And it would appear that all of the items from my chests and storage devices got removed and also redstone torches were removed from walls so yeah I don't know what's really going on there but I just wanted to make you aware of that in case you know you're in a survival world and you do the same thing as me because I can imagine that would be pretty bad but what I've put in place here is we have one of my spin keys so you can see we spin this round and then we get ourselves an output and what I'm trying to do is actually extend the pulse so that it's usable 
but it really is quite difficult because the pulse coming out of it is very fast. So you can see here that comes out as two separate ones, I think. Are they separate? Let's give that another go. And all the way around. No, that gives quite a long pulse. So what I'll do is I will then run that into these pistons here. Because what I want to do is create a little trapdoor. So you spin that redstone torch on the left and then you can drop down into the area. The reason that they're half slabs is because the pulse is so short that it might catch your head. And I don't want to be taking any damage. So we will hook this up to a redstone torch over here. Just grab one of those like that. And then we will run the redstone along the back of these pistons so that they are extended by default. That looks about right. And then we will also run some redstone. Hmm. We're in a bit of a sticky wicket here, aren't we? Because if we run it along like this, I suppose we can put... Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then we'll just run it along underneath. Hopefully it doesn't run into any power source blocks or anything like that. So I've, I think I've just burnt out that torch, haven't I? Right, we'll replace that real quick. Um, but yes, that should run it into here, and then we will have the redstone going across the back. So, when you get the correct spin, we should see that these piston doors will open up long enough for us to fall through. So if you actually take out the blocks beneath them, then we can give that a full tester, uh, replace that half slab there, and do the full spin. And we should drop down now. So yes, that worked absolutely perfectly. Now we have a sort of secret entrance after a secret entrance into what is going to be our science lab. As far as our drop shoot goes, I've had a bit of a cool idea, and that is to use animals. Basically, because this is a sort of science evil testing facility, I thought I would put some animals in cages around here, you know, as you do, and it looks pretty good. At least it gives the impression that this isn't a nice place to be. It's not like a happy, lovely science testing facility in which everything is good and progress is made in very important pieces of science. No, this is the sort of testing facility that tests shampoo on pigs. You know, those kind of ones. So yes, we have those dotted about. And then down here we have got our slime blocks. Those are to break our fall. And actually, one thing that I should definitely do is I should replace the blocks underneath these with iron. And I'm trying to stop myself from using too much iron, but I really can't think of many blocks that sort of correlate to a testing facility other than iron and quartz. It all has to be very white, very clean. You can see here that I've used stone bricks, and these actually look quite good. Now, as far as uh, what I'm going to be doing off in this direction, basically my plan is to have a 4x4 vault door over here, and that will take us through into the main area. That is where most of the stuff is going to be going. So what I'm going to do is I'll get to work on that, and also I'll do a little bit of work decorating this room. Don't really know what I'm going to do yet, but then we will see what I come up with once it's done. Right, so this is what I have managed to do, and I must admit, I am actually quite happy with this. Once again... We have got a few test subjects in here, and actually that's a little bit off, but yes, we have got uh, villagers inside their little cells here. So, once again, quite compact, not a lot of space around them, and I have forgotten iron back here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to place it with this villager back here. I managed to do that one, and oh, please move. Thank you, and this guy over here, I'm assuming is the same. I don't know how I've managed to forget that, but um, anyway, we'll just place that down like that. But yes, I've used quartz as well. This is something that you've never seen in my builds before. It's like the first time I've ever used quartz, and I must admit, I am pleasantly surprised. I think it looks really good. Then over here, we have got the vault door, and this opens and closes nice and quickly. And what we're actually going to do right now is we are going to wire this up to the uh, the pressure plates that we've got down at the front. Now, we're not going to be using anything fancy like a T-flip-flop or anything like that because we quite simply don't need it. We are just going to be using old-fashioned redstone. So we will run that across like this. It's a, it's a glorious waste of redstone, this one is. We're doubling up the wires just because we can. We're in creative mode. We don't really need to worry about any of this stuff. So we'll place that in like that. And we'll give it a quick tester. So, oh, it is open by default. We don't want that. So we'll just take these out and place redstone torches here. Now, if we give this a go, just replace all of the blocks. When we walk along, it should open up by the time we get there. And oh, that hasn't worked too well. Maybe you have to like run through. I don't know. There we go. And now we are in what is going to be the science testing facility. At the minute, it is just a big 
Iron Square, but trust me, there are plenty of ideas for this one. And the first thing that we're actually going to work on is what I'm going to call the Universe Death Clock. It's going to be a very large clock in the middle here, and it's going to have some crazy wires going off on either end, and it's going to look really, really awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the seven segment displays so that they are there in the middle, and then we will get to work on wiring it up. Our seven segment displays are now in place. Now this isn't really sort of the thing that I was going for. I wanted to have a four digit display, but it turns out that actually it would be off centered and we don't want to be doing anything like that. So a two digit one will have to do. I can't say the word digit. It's really difficult to say. Now what I was thinking is that we would run a redstone clock into this one and I will quickly construct that over here. If I need to be careful as to where I put this redstone because I don't want it to look ugly or anything like that. So I'll try and uh, keep it nice and like tight in towards our build here. But we'll just put it in like this. I don't know how big the clock is going to be. Um, I think we have a monostable circuit built into this so I don't need to worry about pulse length. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it, so, right, let's grab our repeaters here. If anyone doesn't know how to build a redstone clock, then here we go. You're about to see how to do it, so, it runs into the block, and then we've got redstone dust there, and repeaters running around like this. It's going to be quite a long clock, because we don't want it to cycle on and on and on, and cause loads of lag. I don't think that would be a good idea whatsoever, but we'll just flick this lever here, and that should send it through, and then we should start getting different digits on our display. So there we go. It is actually counting through, and when it gets to 10, in theory, if I've done this correctly, which evidently I have not placed the repeater in the wrong direction, basically this should cycle through. Let's take a look now. Is it going to do it? Yes, yes it has. So now it's gone up to 10, 11, etc, etc, etc. Now what I'm thinking is, is that uh, this thing is hovering up in the air right now, and it's right in the middle of the room. Now, I'm not actually going to be doing anything in terms of supports, or anything like that. What I really, really want to do, and I think this could be a really cool idea, is I want to like run giant fake wires into it, so sort of like bring them in like this and they're going to be quite thick and they're going to sort of bend up and round about and then go off into the walls as if like the clock is sapping power from the walls and then we could grab uh, some black wool here oh no that's black stained clay uh, we want the black wool and then we can run that out of the wall here and we will put some glowstone and things inside the wire as well. So it looks like it's like sparking. In fact, if we were really going to get technical about this, we could, uh, we could put a redstone line down it with redstone lamps in there. And then occasionally we could pulse it so then it looks like there is a current flowing through the wire. That might be an idea. But I'll quickly just throw the glowstone in now and I'll see what it looks like. Um, what can we get rid of here? That will do. So redstone lamp there. And bit of glowstone in there and there just to bring a little bit more light to the build there uh, we need a little bit more there I mean it's quite hard to do sort of a, a wire shape but that is that's not too bad actually that looks a little bit wiry uh, it's quite difficult to do because I want it to sort of look like it's twisting inwards and then out the back here we could get like a blue one and run that in we'll give that a quick go uh, so we can run that in here. I mean, they're obviously ne they're not doing anything. <laughs> Before anyone thinks that I'm doing anything crazy redstone-y, like transferring uh, signal through blocks or anything like that. No, I'm not doing anything like that. I am quite simply trying to decorate this so that it looks a little bit more mad science-y. We're missing out on that, okay? We're going for the sort of science-y uh, look. We want something that looks like it's fresh from Back to the Future. That's what I'm heading for here. So I think we are onto a winner with these giant wires. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to have your verdict on them. Do you like them? Um, let's place the glowstone in just to light them up so that you can really see it. Down there, I suppose, could do with some uh, right there as well. Let's take a look at this from a distance. Hey, that looks pretty cool. I guess we could have a green one coming out from the bottom here as well. Just sort of hooking downwards and then it could come across like this and then sort of do a little bend and, oh, I've, I've created a bit of a flat plane there, haven't I? But you get the idea. So we'll run that across here. 
and then just a little bit more bumpy. It's, it's really difficult to do. I hadn't quite anticipated how hard this would be to do. But yes, that is looking really, really cool. I'm liking this idea so far. Yeah, because I was originally just having it, gonna have it like hovering up in the sky, but I concluded that that might not be particularly interesting, would it? So we need our black wool back here. Uh, just bung that into our inventory. Gonna get rid of all the redstone stuff now. I know this is meant to be a redstone based sort of series, and it is. We have done quite a lot of redstone based stuff in this episode, but it is important to get the details in place, and I think adding things like this is a really good idea. It's a nice little thing that we can have around our redstone build. So I'm going to keep placing down these wires. I'm gonna dot them about. I don't know like where I'm gonna place them from now. We'll get them coming in from the other side, and then we will see what it looks like when it has all of those things around it. There we go, that is all done, and oh, it looks really, really cool, doesn't it? It looks, it does, like I mentioned earlier, it does look like something out of Back to the Future, or some crazy, crazy science show in which there's some crazy scientist building something crazy. Simple as that. Now, I have actually forgotten the black wool over here. It seems that every time I start recording, I just noticed I have actually forgotten something that needs to be there. But yes, that is now all in place, and what I'm trying to do is I am trying to work out how I could go about getting down from here and oh there are plenty of ways that I could possibly do it and one of the ones that I definitely think is really cool would be to have sort of like a piston way uh, so that you walk out and then the pistons gradually retract as you go down so then you have a nice gradual descent but the issue here is that there is actually redstone behind this wall and that's gonna make it Pretty difficult to do, I suppose. But then again, actually, I've just thought of something here that could potentially work. So say we have a two block high gap here between the fall and then we have blocks here and we just have a little wrap around. We'll put this in temporarily. It's not all going to be built out of iron, at least I don't think. I've been saying that for the whole episode now, so who knows. But um, what we could do then is we will put, it, we'll put in all of our pistons here. So we'll quickly do that. And I'm going to do all of the redstone wiring in wool just because it's going to be on show. You're going to be able to see it. And it always looks better if it's colourful. So we'll put all of the pistons in like that. And then we'll have like the step off pistons there. And yeah, we'll work that out in a couple of seconds. And in fact, the step off pistons are actually going to be further out than this because all of these pistons are going to be extended by default. So then what we'll do is we'll have a redstone wire going down the back. Now, what color should I use? Oh, close my eyes. I'm thinking green. And I missed it. <laughs> um, but yes, so we'll go redstone dust running across the top here. That will power that uh, those pistons there. And then, ah, oh, how do we do this? Okay, we could drop it down a layer. Redstone and, ooh. Ah, this could be quite tricky, couldn't it? Because I need to get like a decent delay. Um, right, okay, so we go redstone dust, repeater there, block up like this, and then redstone dust there, a block with another repeater. I'm fairly certain eight ticks will be more than enough. Let's test it out using a button. That is the main thing that you have to do when doing redstone is you test it. So, oh, it has, <laughs> haven't actually wired it up yet. There we go. Redstone dust across like that. So, okay, so we'll give it a quick test. So that is the sort of speed we'll be looking at here. And actually, we'll replace that with a redstone torch and see if it works as a functional thing. So, just step on this. And, oh, I've messed it up. But, yes, I think it would work. Yeah, no, yeah, that will be a nice gradual descent. So what we'll do then is we'll place another appear over here. Four ticks, and then we have... The redstone dust there and yeah this is a really easy to follow pattern and that can go right the way down it can snake down our wall here so then another repeater set it to four ticks I'm go I'll go into tutorial mode it's really quite bad I don't know why I do this and then yeah repeater four ticks running into the block with the redstone dust on the top yeah you get the idea so I'm going to do all of this right the way down to the bottom and also a little bit of decorating and then we will see if it works once it's done this is another one of those projects that I feel like has gone very, very well indeed. And that is because I've actually tried out using a new block type today. I tried using stained glass. And this is something that I have never, ever used in Minecraft before. And it's amazing. I, I've never thought to use it in a build. I don't know why. Well, I've done a little bit. In the redstone consultancy, I used the red stained glass. But the white stained glass, oh boy, look how good that looks. 
I think the reason that it looks so good is because you can tell there is something there, but you can still see everything behind it very clearly. Whereas with normal glass, you can see straight through it, and if it didn't have like the little cuts going across it, it might as well not be there. The stained glass here that we have is absolutely lovely. But anyway, let's take a look at a ride on this elevator. So you just hit this button, and you can see that we get a nice gradual descent down onto our laboratory floor. Who knows what we are going to be putting down here, but I'm sure it will be something very interesting. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is actually all I've got time for for today. I hope that you enjoyed this first episode of the new series. I had an absolute blast recording it. I feel like we've done quite a lot of stuff and come up with a bunch of really cool ideas. So if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.